Sweet Space is Sims, and we are back with more Pure Fiore, and we are just continuing Gil's route, and we just started Chapter 3, Discovery. All right. The morning after the meeting. Yay! <laughs> I almost actually wanted to scream louder, but I restrained myself. route because we get to keep Leo. He's my favorite side character. He's my bestest friendest. I love him so much. Such a good boy. We need to protect him and now we have some puppy to play with. <laughs> I'm just like, the happiest to see him. Not because like obviously like it's not like oh I'm in love with Leo. No. I just love him so fucking much. I just want to keep him forever. Like, I just love Leo. Not even as a boyfriendo. Not even as a husband. -o. Not any of that at all. I just love Leo. Anyway. Kill told me that the Fell Zone guard had arrived and took me to his room. So, you're from the Fell Zone? Yep. Yeah. Name's Leo Cap. Kavagnus? Kavagnus. Why? I can't remember his name. Leo! <laughs> the young man gave a friendly smile and looked to be about my age. Does seeing a young guy like me worry you? N no, it's not that. In fact, I feel relieved. I was worried about meeting an intimidating person. <laughs> Don't worry. The scariest in the foul zone is our boss. But the rest of us are all real nice people. Is that meant to reassure me? It's a pleasure, Signorina. Likewise, it's a pleasure. Oh, and please call me Space. It's what everyone else calls me. Leo seemed relieved, and I saw him relax and smile brightly. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm not used to things like this, so to be honest, I'm relieved you said that. Please call me Leo as well. Well, Leo's a good fit to guard you. If Dante or Nicola were with you 24-7, it'd definitely catch people's eye. Especially since you walk around with me, too. People will wonder what happened between the Falzone and the Visconti. The whole town would be a buzz. I couldn't help but smile imagining it. Besides, this guard will be by your side a long time. I'm sure Dante chose someone who wouldn't make you feel uncomfortable. Dante's such a sweetheart like that. He did. He gave me best present. Sure, he got me a kitten, too, but, like, he gave me Leo. Would Dante be that considerate? Yeah, I certainly think so. Despite his appearance, the boss is real kind. He seemed very stern, but I suppose that's not all there is to him. Leo stood tall and officially faced Gil. Senor Redford, please allow me to accompany Spacey for the duration of my assignment. Right. It's a pleasure to have you, Leo. If you do anything suspicious, I will immediately report it to the Fell Zone. That's my job. Leo's word made me a little nervous, but Gil smiled and obliged. Nah, don't provoke me. That's biting off more than you can chew. Besides, if you die as the guard, it'll be a quick decision for the Fell Zone. They'll have an excuse to raid us. And you'd fulfill your mission, Leo. The Visconti and the Fell Zone are working together. That means we're comrades, right? We're able to cooperate now, so there's no point in ruining it over a dumb fight. Leo still stared at Gil, looking as if his guard was still up. Now that we've gotten the introductions out of the way, come to the lounge. I want to discuss what's next. Gil sat down and looked around at the men who had gathered. As a result of our meeting last night, we've decided to form a coalition with the Foul Zone and the Lao Shu. The bosses have all agreed to forget our differences for now, but I know some of you won't be satisfied with that. Therefore... We've decided that each family will do their own investigations. I see. So cooperation amongst the families while still acting separately. And that seems to be the most logical choice. Right? And we'll also have the occasional meeting to share information. Um... Kill, how do you plan on doing the investigation? Is there anything I can do to help? When I asked, Gil seemed to be a little happy to hear it, and his smile grew wider. He's like, that's what I like, and I'm a woman. You certainly can. I tend to like getting my information straight from the source. Having you around would be mighty helpful. Being that this is a Berlone affair, I reckon having a chat with the townspeople would give us some answers. And the people at Krita must be worried about hearing that I was arrested. I should drop by and say hi. <laughs> Just as I expected. Although the circumstances, circumstances weren't ideal, Gil seemed to be perfectly at ease. Thanks to him, the rising anxiety I had been feeling slowly started to dissipate. 
After Gil had finished giving his men orders, everyone began to file out of the lounge. Remaining in the room were Gil, Oliver, Leo, and myself. I have my own preparations to attend to. At present, I'm uncertain whether I can use the antidotal evidence Gilbert will obtain in court. Worst case, no matter what happens, I must prove Gilbert's innocence by whatever means necessary. Right. I'll leave that to you. Thanks. Gil turned to me as though he remembered something. Oh, we should drop by the Fell Zone sometime soon and talk to Dante. Dante? He may not be up for it, but there was one thing he said that bothered me. Do you remember when Dante said it was the Fell Zone's mission to protect the Key Maiden? Oh, yes. But he never told us the role this Key Maiden plays. It must be important. Something that would require the Mafia to protect it. Having complete, accurate information is important. Leo, have you heard anything about this? I asked Leo since he was part of the Fell Zone, but he shook his head apologetically. I'm sorry, I was told nothing. The first time I heard about the Key Maiden was when I order was ordered to be your guard. I was told to protect you, but I wasn't given any other details. Gilbert, I know it may not be my place to say so, but perhaps you're overthinking it. From what I hear, she's very important to the Falzone. That much I understand. However, given that the Berlone Mafia have agreed to cooperate, do you think she's safe from all harm? You can protect me, Oliver. Snuggles up. Protect me, Oliver! He's like, please don't touch me. <laughs> Oliver would be like the weirdest person to date. I love him so much, but he would just be so strange. He'd probably be like, am I supposed to like hold your hand or something? Like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> he's so like business-like. He'd be like, he'd be like, the, I don't under, he'd be more awkward than Dante. Okay. And that's saying something because Dante was a little fucking awkward. Well, Shu may be quiet. We don't know if they're the only enemies. Whoever sent me up may also have information about her as well. We need to be able to move in an emergency. Gil, are you worried about the real culprit? Yeah? They deliberately framed me. There's a chance they have some kind of grudge. Of course, that may also not be the case. I have been I may have been chosen by coincidence. Regardless, the more information, the better. So I want to hurry up and get to it. I see. You have a point there. And there are some things about the Fal Zone that are concerning. However, but before that, wouldn't it be better for you to visit the visit Yang of the Lao Shu first? And there's a strong chance that whatever is involved with the counterfeiting, correct? And then, wouldn't it be more effective to speak to the head of the Lao Shu first? True. I shouldn't ignore that. But if we ask now, will we get any more information than we got last night? I'm not sure much has changed overnight, so it may be more effective to wait for Yang to spy on the home country first. Oliver seemed to be convinced, and nodded lightly before falling silent in thought. Leo looked around at everyone's expressions and asked timidly, Uh, a lot's been discussed, but at the end of the day, what are we going to do? I want to hear Space's opinion. Me? Yeah. With your involvement, you're a legitimately an interested party. You have a right to choose your path as well. Thank you. I've been trying to do that as I get choices, but I've been following a guide. As I said earlier, I don't plan on having you stay here forever. I also promised Dante that I'd protect you. In order for me to keep my word, you're going to move with me. And I've said it before, but the safest place for you in this town is right by my side. Am I by your side in your bed? Look at you. You're looking at me with that sexy, smarmy look like, yeah... Gonna wink at me? Probably winking under that eye patch, I just can't tell. Gil looked at me straight in the eye and smiled with so much confidence. I'll be staying back. I have many things to prepare before the trial. Oh, I'll be going with you guys, of course. I was appointed to be your guard after all. So what do you want to do? If you don't feel like it, I can save going to the foul zones in the Lao Shu another time. We can take care of other things, so let me know. What should I do? I thought hard on it. I was like, you get to choose your path, and we get to choose the path. We visit the Falzone. I think it'd be best to visit the Falzone as soon as possible. Besides, I want to know more about myself as well. Got it. Well, let's get going. With that, we immediately set off to the Falzones. So, Gil, did you let Dante know that we were on our way? Hmm? Do I have to? What? 
go make the call. Even if we formed a coalition, I'm sure no one would expect the boss of the Visconti to show up at the front door. Everyone will be so surprised, so please give me one moment. You think so? I don't have to worry about anything. I'm sure Dante wouldn't mind. Hmm. She's like, hmm. I didn't know how to respond, so I gave a partial response and a wry smile. Yo, Dante. You sleep well last night? You don't look too shabby. Don't worry about it. I'm just in a bad mood. Did something happen? Dante's like, you just fucking showed up on X. I love Dante's angry face. I just love Dante's angry face. And Gil's like, what up? what's up, man? I just rolled in your house. And Dante's like, fuck you. It's 5 a.m. Like, his brows furrowed. And without saying anything, he glared at Gil with a stern look. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to show up unannounced. I felt uncomfortable, but took a deep breath before speaking. <sighs> I'm sorry. Um, buongiorno, Dante. Forgive us for visiting on such short notice. I wanted to ask you something about myself. The key maiden. Understood. There's no point in hiding anything now. I'll tell you what I know. And now that we've involved you to this degree, you have the right to know. Leo. Yes, sir! I'm gonna wait outside the room. If you need anything, call for me anytime. Leo seemed to grasp what Dante wanted to say, bowing and swiftly exiting the office. Like, I'd be like, Leo's like my best friend. I'm gonna tell him everything you know about, right? He might as well just be here. He's like, already? Yeah. Because, like... I already know him. We, like, know each other so well already because we've spent time with each other. Like, two other routes. Anyway. <laughs> Dante looked down with a sigh, then looked at me sternly. The Felzone have lived in this land for generations. We were tasked in secret to oversee the relic. You are aware of the divine message regarding the Church of Berlone? Yes. The Church of Berlone was said to have been built by those who heard the prophecy. But not many know much about the legend anymore. No definitive record has been found, and it's been forgotten by history. And that's because the Falzone tampered with the information. The one who received the prophecy was none other than the Falzone's ancestor. And the message also foretold of a key that would unlock the seal to the relic. In other words, the Key Maiden. The information was not to be made public, and so only the legend of the church's construction remains to this day. The Fell Zone doesn't have any detailed instructions on how to lift the seal, and so as for what happened long ago, all information has been lost. Dante didn't look away from me and spoke in a matter-of-fact way. The key maidens chosen through astrology by the church and disclosed to the Fell Zone, and because of their value, many key maidens throughout time have been targeted. So, that's why they need to be protected. Gil finished his thought, and Dante nodded slightly. Gilbert, you're well aware that there are organizations who enter Berlone to participate in criminal activity for profit. Like the Mafia? What if those people found out that there's a woman who the Falzone are treating specially? What would happen? A woman that we're treating specially? But like if I was like your what? Oh yeah, no, they try to kill me. Take Dante's wife out. <gasps> My imagination ran wild, and I felt a chill run down my spine. In this incident, if the culprit's after money or power, and her existence goes public, everyone will come after her. Gil's expression turned grim as he looked at Dante. The Falzones are the keepers of the grave who have passed down this role by blood to protect the relic. In order to do so, we need power, meaning money and weapons. What you doing, birdies? Did you you're clucking away, you having a conversation? We took up arms to protect this land from the rulers of the time, and have since come to be known as the Mafia today. Then, the reason why the Falzone is so concerned by blood is... Our rules of pure blood that the Visconti despised was due to the rules of guardianship we were given. After speaking, he gave a heavy sigh. Spacey, I know it may be unforgivable, but I wish to apologize. Sorry, I've involved you in the Falzone's mission. Well, you didn't really. Technically, the church did by reading astrology and deciding I was the key man. Dante, 
If I could, I would have continued to protect you in secret without your knowing anything. The Key Maiden is something that changes with the stars. If enough time passed, you wouldn't have known anything and eventually would have been free. Ah, okay, that makes more sense. But because the Church has questioned the capabilities of the Felzone to protect you, because I wasn't good enough, the truth has been revealed. Up until now, he had simply been telling me the facts, but now his voice and expression looked pained. So we just have to wait until the stars change and I'm no longer the Key Maiden. It'll be okay. Sweet. I... Please don't apologize. You've been watching over me all this time, right? Thank you, Dante. But look how sad he looks. Don't say that he looks so sad. Because he's like, I was when I was a kid and I loved you and I thought you were beautiful. Kind of always been pining over you a little and now you're always with someone else. You were our first boy. Precious fucking thing. I love him. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I love Dante. And I love Nicola. And I, I really kind of like Gil a lot. And like, I love Trash Bando Yang for just being trash. Like, in everyone else's route, I'm like, seriously, can someone, like, fucking bitch slap this motherfucker? But, like, in his... But I love him anyway. And I do love Orlock. But, like, I'm not as, like, I love you so much, Orlock. You know, I love Orlock, and his route was actually really cute. Don't get me wrong. But, unfortunately, he just... I don't know. He's still beautiful, but he still borders a little too close to the lolly territory. A little too much. The, no. Like, I love you and I want to protect you and be like your best friend, like Leo, you know. But it's not like the I just want to hold you and protect you and you come into the man harem. It's like, ah, you know. <laughs> like, but I love Dante a little bit more than I expected to, to be honest. Like, I never knew my parents, but even so, I was able to live each day happily. And it was all thanks to you and the rest of the Falzone. I looked at him full of gratitude and smiled. So, please don't worry. I'm fine. Of course, I was anxious and scared. I realized I'd been protected all this time. Although it was an act, I tried to stand tall. I now know why the stars chose you. Huh? You do? I heard him speaking softly, but I didn't understand what he meant. I'm of the same opinion as Dante. That smile's enough to break any seal. Oh, but that's not how you break the seal. <laughs> when you phrase it that way. It sounds inappropriately phrased. Oh, but it... I mean, it is. Gil laughed brightly and jokingly agreed with Dante. Dante, while we're at it, I have some gruesome things to discuss. You got a sec? I don't mind. However, I don't think she needs to hear this. Gil nodded at Dante's words and looked in my direction. We must ask you to wait a while until we're finished. Is that all right? I'm fine. I'll be waiting with Leo. I answered calmly. After speaking with Dante, my former doubts about the Falzone now turned into trust. Yes, yeah, see? We love Dante! Bye, precious. I miss you. Gil walked with me all the way to the door as I gave them their privacy. Sorry about that. I'll be quick. No, no. Don't worry about it. I know it's important. Grazie. And Leo... Make sure to guard her good. Understood. Leave it to me. Just from hearing our short conversation, Leo immediately understood the situation. He's a smart boy. He may be a hyperactive little puppy, but he's smart. I've already shooed people away, so feel free to talk as you please. That's very helpful. Well, see you later. Gil smiled and waved at me. I went back into the room. And then, why don't we wait in the salon until they're done talking? The other men might be there, but if they ask anything, I'll be the one to explain. Sure. Thank you, Leo. As he gave a brief explanation about the manor, I followed Leo to the salon. When we entered, I was amazed at the beauty of the room. Feeling its history, sorry. So much care was put into every detail, and it glowed with a warm light. It was a little different from the Visconti Lounge. Elegant, but also made me a little nervous. Luckily, everyone seemed to be out, so no one was around. Welcome to the Falzone Manor. I'm sure it was cold out today. I can't quite remember her fucking voice, but... The lady dressed in a housemaid's uniform handed each of us a mug. Hot milk again? I can drink espresso. I'm not a kid. You say so. 
but to me, you're just like a child, dear Leo. Oh, this is Julia. She handles the housework around here. Julia! Kind of missed you, Julia. <laughs> I missed Leo a little more, not gonna lie, but I still love Julia. Pleased to meet you, Julia. I'd be happy if you could call me Space. Oh, welcome, Space. Hey, you're a friend of young Dante, are you not? But feel free to drop by any t- Well, I suppose it would be difficult to just drop by, but... Hey, you're welcome to visit any time. Young Dante. She must have been working for the family for a long time now. The boss of the Falzone was known to be cold, but to her, he was still a kid. Knowing that made me... F knowing that made him feel a little more approachable. As I thought, I raised the mug to my lips and drank the hot, steamy milk. Oh, this is delicious! It wasn't just milk. There was a sweet taste of honey and a faint scent of cinnamon. Like, Julia, come on. It's amazing. I don't know if I'd ever want to drink warm milk. Like, I was always, it's a thing, but I've always been like, I don't know about warm milk. I don't know, but then like, a little bit of honey and cinnamon. That sounds actually delicious. I would try that. That's like, you would just put an extra spin on that. You didn't just like, put some milk in the microwave, bitch. Like, I felt the tension inside me melt away from the warmth. I also never actually have milk in my house. I have like almond milk, so I don't have a trick in the hot. Like, mix it into something, sure, but like. I've served hot milk to many children of the foul zone. Ooh, and they spelled Julia wrong. Oh my god, what? When they grow up, they naturally go out of it. But they all loved it when they were little. Well, there was one child who didn't like it. I love this hot milk, Julia. It's really delici delicious. Delicious. Oh my god, there's are spelling her name wrong. My, that sweetie view. Thank you. I can make it for you anytime. I see you've all become friends over hot milk. I'm gonna guess Nicola's the one that didn't like it, right? Oh, Nicola! And Julia showed me a recipe, so I used to make it often for Dante back in the day. Those were good times. He entered the salon and smiled kindly at me. Um, buongiorno, signorina. Um, buongiorno, Nicola. You know, I think it was good timing telling you that story. That story? He must be talking about the story of the key maiden from the other day. And Dante's been tied to his mission and carrying the burden all by himself. Although it was the church who revealed the foul zone's secret. And thanks to that, I feel the burden on Dante's shoulders become a little lighter. He's like, and if you get near him, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> It's so funny because he's like, oh, you're like, oh, Nicola. But deep down in his eyes is the like, I'm being sweet and innocent. They have sad eyes, but I will kill you if I have to. <laughs> this man must have supported the boss, Dante, all this time. He seemed truly concerned about Dante's well-being. I could sense that. I mean, that's not wrong. He does care about Dante's well-being, which is why he would totally kill us to keep Dante safe. Like. <laughs> Just so Dante doesn't go insane with this stupid duty bullshit. May I join you all? Let's chat a while. Sure, I'd love to hear your stories. He looked at me with his jade green eyes, and I smiled back at him, nodding. You're like, yeah, I mean, I would love to. You're coming to the man harem with me. Come on. This is what we do in the man harem. We hang out, we tell stories, we cuddle and read together, maybe have some warm milk, <laughs> you know, hot chocolate, coffee, something. <laughs> It's a cuddle mansion, okay? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so the four of us talked as we ate the snacks Julia prepared for us. What are you doing? You were late, and your guests seemed bored, so I was spending some time with her. We were discussing your childhood. I particularly love that story of the time you wet yourself and cried. Frowning, he put his fingers to his brow as if he had a headache. He's like, God. Dante. But it's so cute when we see Dante as a child. It's like, you're so cute, little baby Dante. You seem to be getting along. Let me join. Young laughed happily as he sat down beside me. When I first visited the Falzone Manor, I was naturally very nervous. Now I felt my heart was at peace. It was as if I came to visit the house of a dear friend. I, it, oh, it felt peaceful and warm. That's well, because Leo and Julia are here. Like, Nicholas is a little shady. He does seem like... Oh, he seems so warm and kind and inviting. You know, for shady reasons. And Dante's a little... Doesn't quite give you that vibe for a while. But it's Julia and Leo. I'm glad I came here. 
I feel like I was able to take the next step, feeling radiant and bright. I felt like I was able to start. Ah, Leo, I need to ask you to send a package to Paris. Is that all right? Paris? Wait, Gerald Paris? The city councilor of Berlone? Why would you have jumped to that? We've mentioned Gerald Paris before, but as soon as he said Paris, I thought he meant like a package to the, like, Paris, France. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm always happy to. Oh, but... Leo looked over at me, worried. Gil spoke up, understanding what he wanted to say. No, we're doing is going home. Don't worry about Gardner. Just do your thing and then come back. Leo looked over at Dante. Seeing that he wasn't saying anything, Leo nodded eventually. Dante's like, waiting for Leo. And Leo's like, sure, I'll do that bad choice. Dante just shakes his head. <laughs> Leo's like, fuck, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Excuse me, I'll return shortly. And that's how Gil and I ended up leaving the Falzone Manor alone. Since we had to return to the Visconti Manor, Gil and I were walking the streets of Krita. Uh, that's right. Before we go back, I'd like to drop by somewhere. Gil just remembered something and turned to me deliberately. Oh, that's fine. I'll go with you. I accepted immediately, but Gil looked a little troubled. Actually... Thinking about it, I don't think it's a place I should take a signorina. Although we didn't stop walking, Gil seemed to have thought twice about it. Where are you going? Strano. Oh. Strano was known for being a very dangerous district, more so than Valeno. I knew he was concerned for my well-being, and that's why he wasn't sure about it. But that's all right. I often go to Strano to pass out food. You remember, right? You have a point. I guess going there wouldn't be a first for you, huh? Gil heard my response and nodded lightly. With that, we both set off for Strano. Today, Strano had a different air than usual. It was strangely noisy and crowded. I wonder what happened. An eerie feeling made us more alert. We looked around us and heard people shouting. What the hell? Want to start something? What are you talking about? You're in the wrong here, making all the money yourself. Yeah, what he said. You got a good gig, right? Tell us what it is. And the drunk's fighting again. Uh, I don't have any gigs. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. What'd you say, you bastard? Better be careful what you say to me. Onlookers were gathering and jeering them on. Their arguments seemed to be getting worse because they were drunk. Youth. Oh, they thought they were kids. It should have said, like, Strano drunk. I mean, I guess they're talking about youth, like, young men, but it, to me, when they say youth, I think it's a child. I guess they would have said kid or child, but anyway. We shouldn't leave them like that. Gil was watching them argue and muttered quietly to me, or like, yeah, they could have said Strano drunk A, or like, man A, but youth just... Hold on a minute. Let me go stop them. Oh, Gil! Hey, guys. Nothing to see here. Hmm? It was just getting under t- You're- Gilbert? Gil pushed the curious onlookers aside and headed toward the people arguing. The onlookers who noticed Gil froze and immediately made way for him. Oh. You bastard! If you're gonna say that much- Yeah. Why don't we put the knives away? Don't die over booze like this. The hell'd you say? You're gonna cross me? I gotta change their voices. They can't be little kids anymore. Hmm, you look familiar. I don't know who the hell you are, but you got some nerve coming here with a woman. The argument turned toward us. Though frightened, I tried settling things down. Please calm down. Neither of, wants, neither of us wants to fight with you. Eh? Who the hell do you think you're talking to, stupid bitch? In that instant, a flash of purple came before my eyes. By the time I realized it was a coat, he was standing in front of me. It seems like you're the one who doesn't know who you're speaking to. Orlok? Orlok was standing in front of me in a protective stance. I seriously thought, like, Gil was going to take that motherfucker out for calling me a stupid bitch, but... Huh, who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? The young man gave him a hostile glare, and the other man cowered. Gil approached the others and tapped one of them on the shoulder. What do you say? Think you're sober now? Despite how I look, I hate blood. I'd rather stab you from pummeling each other to death. But I also don't like men who shout at women. It makes me want to pummel them to death. 
I know it sounds contradictive. W wait! Uh, are you the Viscontis? If you guys aren't going to sober up over this, maybe I can help. What do you say? No! <laughs> no, no need! We're up for it! Don't let booze get the best of you next time. That's not what a man does. Gil didn't seem to want to go after them, so he just watched them run off. I... Gil, you're so kind. You stopped them so that they wouldn't get hurt, right? You're giving me too much credit. For me, I just don't like fights. Even if that's the case, that's what makes you so kind. And yet, you were going to kill me a couple times. And willing to fight to the death to kill me. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I didn't like doing it. I just felt I had to. Okay, sure. If you're on equal footing, you can fight or punch each other out or whatever. But I just don't like bullying. Gil's words were quiet, but I felt like there was a fire behind his eyes. Using alcohol to hit people or make women and children cry. A low life like that deserves to be punched, that's all. So in the end, I guess you can say I'm short-tempered. Gil gave a bitter smile and looked away from me as if troubled and felt quiet. I'm sure he would probably deny it, but Gil has a strong sense of justice. Despite being in the Mafia, or maybe it's because he's in the Mafia, his sense of pride kept him from turning a blind eye to the oppressed and vulnerable. Um, so... Why have you come here, Orlok? I follow you. Orlok seemed to hesitate, but eventually relented and spoke honestly. You see, I've been watching over you this entire time. Ever since you left the Visconti Manor, until now. Y you have? The Church had chosen you, so you unknowingly became involved in Mafia-related incidents. As a disciple, I wish to protect you. His Excellency also feels the same way. Thank you, Orlok. So you've been watching over me from afar? Oh, uh, of course I don't mean to say I'm watching you all day long. I merely pay attention to when you travel to dangerous places such as Strano. Yes, I'm very thankful for you. You saved me even now. I it's fine. This is all for you. Say, Orlok? Yes? It would make me happy if you'd call me by my name. Space. You don't need to be too formal. Just treat me as a friend, and I'd be happy. Uh, all right. I will. Space. It's like, we're making everyone our friend in this route. Like, in every other one, we're like, no, you... Just, we're not, like, everyone's friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like in Gil's route, we're friends with everyone. Call me Space, tell me. I don't really trust Yang, but, like, he's that friend that, like, why are you friends with him? We don't know. We've known him since college, and you're like, all right, I don't really like him, but I guess I tolerate him. Whatever, <laughs> like... But I mean, like... We're like everybody's bestie. Thank you. And you can call me Gil, Orlock. Yes, Gil. Oh! I thought there was a commotion, but it's just you guys. Are you giving up money again? Oh, it's that little kid. Never mind. <laughs> That's not Luca's voice. I didn't know who it was. Oh, you're that kid from the other day. Let me ask you something. Has anything strange been happening here lately? Huh? Where'd that come from? What do you mean by strange? Seeing new people around, something like that. Tell me anything that's changed lately. If you tell me what you know, of course I'll pay you for the intel. Hmm. Ah, uh, something that's changed, huh? But come to think of it, there is something. The man immediately stuck his hand up. The man, the boy, he's like six. He's like ten. You got balls. Here, let me hear it. Gil gave him a coin and the boy gave a big smile. By the way, kid, what's your name? Luca. Luca! He's not dead this time! I'm sorry, that was actually the hardest part of Orlok's route. Okay, second to the bad ending where Dante raped us. That was not pleasant at all, and I don't like that, and I don't like even having to say that, and I'm gonna have to go, like, gargle and, like, just wash that awful taste into my mouth, brush my teeth, and, like, floss, and, like, argh, like some Listerine in there or whatever. Like, I don't even like saying it, but, you know. But in the happy ending, this was still the most tragic thing that fucking happened. The boy who called himself Luca gripped the coin tightly and spoke. At least he's alive now. It's not around here, but in Arca. You know all the government offices over there? I saw tourists staying there. I could tell in a second they weren't from Berlone. 
they, they were wearing nice suits, but something about them just looked like they weren't just normal visitors. And I picked up a bag they dropped. Did you take it to the police? Police? I never do that. If you took it there, it only caused me trouble. I only picked it up, and they're going to ask if I stole it. Screw that! So anyway, as I was saying, there was something weird in the bag. He looked inside the drop bag. He's like, <laughs> lady, I'm poor. I'm going to look in there for money, food, anything I can sell, a coat for the winter. You got a problem with that? He dropped it on the ground already. Point is, it's mine. I couldn't say it was a good thing to do, but considering how he lived his life here, I couldn't exactly reprimand him either. Not that he would listen. So I was going to throw it away. But if you want to buy it for me, I can bring it from my place if you're willing to wait. Depends on what's inside. If it's as weird as you say, I'll pay you well. All right, then. I'll be right back. You stay there. Luca shouted happily as he ran off. Just as he said, he returned immediately with... A letter? A white envelope with a torn red seal. Is this... The seal of a casino? Luca, did you read inside? No, I can't read, but that envelope was already open. But it's only a letter, right? It's not going to magically turn into money, so I just left it. Kiel opened the envelope. He's like, it's something weird. A letter. <laughs> it's weird because I can't read it. <gasps> I told you. A casino on the night of the new moon. Come to the 12 seats. Let's explore your dreams. Oh, I was reading the card, not the text underneath. <laughs> <laughs> the night of the new moon, come to the 12 seats. Let's explore your dreams. I know it's coming from Giuseppe somebody, but I'm just saying. <gasps> Dear Dottore, of course I'll explore my dreams with you. <laughs> Fan self. <laughs> 12 seats? Can it be a table number? Gil stared at the letter, looking down at an enclosed bill. This is a $10 bill? You can't use that money around here. And then again, I wouldn't be able to go into a place where I could use it. Luca, you did good. It's pretty interesting stuff. Gil praised Luca with a smile and pulled out several bills from his wallet. Luca gripped them in his hands. He, like, uh, surprised, like, there's a $10 bill. He's like, you can't use it around here. This shit's fake. What? Yeah, I know what fake bills look like. I ain't stupid. They may be 10, but life on the streets hardened me, motherfuckers. Now he's got a deep smoker's voice. I've been living on the streets for a long time. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it's probably because, like, no place around here would take American money. You know what I mean? But, sounds funny. This much? Are you sure? Luca's eyes sparkled, and he immediately put them in his pocket without waiting for an answer. Hey, hey, if anything else happens and I report to you, will you buy the information for me? Yeah, of course, it'd be a big help. Yeah! Plugs finally come around to me, too! To you, too? Something about that struck me, and Luca gave a big nod. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like business is good lately. Lots of people in Strano have money now. It's fake money. When you have something good, no one wants to tell everyone, you know? And that's why no one tells you how they make it. Well, I'm gonna make my own money, then. Later, guys! If anything happens, I'll let you know. So... Business is good lately. Gil muttered to himself as he watched Luca run off. And this keeps spreading. We'll lose our customers. And it's actually already starting now. News travels fast underground. Eventually it'll drive off the tourists and Berlin will take a big financial hit. If that happens, it'll become even harder to live in Strano. And not just Strano. The surrounding region will be affected. People will lose their jobs and perhaps their homes. Thinking about all the possibilities made me depressed. I stared at the direction where Luca ran off, and Gil muttered quietly. We were lucky we met Luca. He seems dependable. Kids like that have the tendency to look at the world around them more than adults. Oh my god, Gil's gonna adopt Luca. Look, we had adopted him in Orlok's route and he died. Maybe if we adopt him in Gil's route, he'll live forever. Wait, he's got kind of like reddish brown hair. Gil, Jesus Christ, keep it in your fucking pants. Is that your kid? Probably his fucking kid. <laughs> I do not need that shit thrown in this route. Please don't. After we left Strano, we parted ways with Orlok and headed back to Krita. According to Gil, it seemed Orlok was very busy as well. He was responsible for communicating with the church and following their orders. 
I know what you're thinking. It's not Oliver's kid. Oliver's not that kind of guy, okay? Could you just imagine him? Like, please. I can't even imagine actually having a real datey route with him. You'd be like, he'd be so weird and wouldn't be able to hold your hand. There's no way he'd, like, have bastard kids out there. <laughs> I know you were thinking it because it crossed my mind. I'm like, it's not. No, wait, that's ridiculous. Just try to picture that. Yeah, no, come on. Fucking absurd. We chatted as we walked and reached a small street market in Krita. It absolutely could be, he could be Gil's son, because I'm just saying. Gil or Nicola, slightly whorish. Just saying. Well, Gil's a ladies' man. We don't know how far he takes it, but Nicola absolutely has a few bastard kids out there. Oh, oh, Gil, I heard you were arrested. As soon as people spotted Gil, they rushed over to talk to him. Yeah, sorry for worrying you guys. As you can see, I'm out now, so fear not. Gil smiled, and everyone gathered around him even more. I heard about it. There's no way that the Visconti would make counterfeit money. We all know that you wouldn't do such a thing, Gil. Don't worry. The people of Krita are all on Gil's side. The people talking to Gil were all smiling, and it made me feel warm inside. As I watched them all from afar... Oh, Signorina! Huh? You're so beautiful! When I saw you, I knew what true love was! I want to take you away with me now, is that okay? Oh, that's no youth. Uh... That wasn't a child. I forgot when they say youth, it makes me think that it's a young, like, Luca. Like a kid, not youth. is supposed to be like a young man. But like, you're so beautiful. When I saw you, I knew what true love was. I wanted to take you away with me now. Is that okay? Anyway. Oh, no, I'm waiting for someone. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be like that. Please teach this fool what love is. Even when I clearly said no, he wouldn't give up and grab my hand. But please stop. I tried to shake him off, but his grip was stronger than I expected. It's okay, it's okay. You won't regret it. Don't! Just then, I felt another arm reach out and pull me from the side. Oh! Gilbert. <laughs> okay, I love this CG. Because Gilbert's face is like, I'm going to fucking kill someone. Like, he normally has such a beautiful, happy, like, face. And this is like the... This is the Yang face. <laughs> this is Gilbert's Yang face. You want to see my Yang impression? <sighs> like, he is just like, the grin to everything is like the, I will fucking end you. <laughs> so not Gilbert. <laughs> you have business with my woman? I was surprised, and not just by what he said. It was also because he pulled me so close that my body was up against his. Gilbert? As soon as he realized he was standing next to me, he went pale. I'll teach you one thing. You're gonna pick up a girl, make no mistake. A man doesn't deserve a woman's love if he forces her to do something she hates. That was such a dig on fucking Dante and Orlok's bad ending. It's haunting me! I can't... Now that I remembered it, I can't forget it. <sighs> Gil still held me tightly with a broad smile on his face. It's okay, we know Dante's better than that, okay? However, his eyes weren't... His eye wasn't laughing at all. His stare was piercing cold. We don't know what his other eye is doing. <laughs> I guess we can safely assume if one eye is staring intently, the other one would be two. But we don't know. It could be a lazy eye and it could be flopping all over doing cartwheels. I don't, we don't know. I'm just saying. The game should have just... <laughs> it's going to be a thing now. Uh, I'm sorry, Gilbert. I didn't mean to... You're apologizing to the wrong person. I apologize, Signorina. It's fine, as long as you understand. Th thank God, uh, I'll be on my way then. The man turned around without a second look and desperately ran off. Gil stared at the man running away as he still held me close. But just before my heart reached its limit, he let me go. Are you alright? Yes. <clears throat> I couldn't ask him to go away. I'm sorry, Gil. If only I could have told him to go away. Well, you said no, don't. You didn't really get much time in edgewise with him attacking you, so. Gil smiled, but seemed to have mixed feelings. He patted my head with his brow, still furrowed. Huh? W what? The men of this country can't help but chase after the pretty women they see. I'm sure you've had many men try to grab your attention, but... Well, he did... She tried to grab more than my attention. Uh... 
Well, I bet you just do what you can to push them away, right? And considering that, it's rough. You're doing a good job. In fact, you try too hard. When you're by my side, you can depend on me more, you know. Gil, his words made me happy, but if I depend on him all the time, when I return to the church, I won't be able to do anything on my own. I couldn't even bring myself to depend on him now when all I could do was smile. We left the shopping district and walked the short way we had left. Just a little longer until the manor. I finished analyzing the invitation and the $10 bill that you brought. The invitation was nothing more than it appeared. However, the $10 bill was indeed a counterfeit. I knew it. Why would they put that in the invitation? A little small seed for money, wouldn't you say? A little small for seed money, wouldn't you say? That makes more sense if I could read properly, anyway. A little small for seed money, wouldn't you say? There we go. I stared at the counterfeit bill on the table and muttered, This bill looks brand new. Hmm? Huh? Oh, I mean, it's not dirty at all, and there aren't any creases. If it hasn't gone out to the public, perhaps it was freshly made. This is an invitation to the counterfeiting ring. Hello, it has something to do with the counterfeiting ring. I'm just saying. Gil's eyes grew wide, and he grabbed the counterfeit bill, staring at it. You're absolutely right. It's a brand new bill. A newly printed one. And that means... Gil swallowed, and a fiery red appeared beyond his eyes. Gil, what are you planning to do? I'm gonna go punch a bitch. It would be rude to decline the invitation. We'll see them on the night of the new moon, next Friday. He's planning to go to the casino? My heart began to pound, feeling like something was about to happen. According to Chapter 4, it's Take a Gamble. So are we at Chapter 4? Ha <laughs> ha! And the title of Chapter 4 is Take a Gamble! So we go into the casino! <laughs> we gotta, we got some time soon. It had been around a week since I started staying with the Visconti. Every day we gathered information on the counterfeit money issue. However, it wasn't easy to find details about the real culprit. Even though Gil's freedom was on the line, he said there was no point in panicking and didn't seem bothered by the fact that nothing was improving. Bad ending he goes to jail. <laughs> Uninvited. Ooh, meanwhile story, okay. Ooh! Emilio! It's not, it's... Rosberg. It was a beautiful afternoon. I greeted an unexpected visitor and found myself somehow playing chess with him. I wonder how they've been doing in Berlone. What do you think, Joseph? I fucking love Emilio and I cannot wait to find out more. I love every... The characters in this are so good, I love them all. But I cannot wait to find out more about Emilio. I, like... He knows some shit. This kid knows some shit, and he's behind some shit, and he's got some fucking puppeteering puppet strings going on, and I just need to know what's going on. Be like... Wait, what did I say? I oh, yeah, what do you think, Joe? Okay. Well, at the end of the day, they're a criminal organization, although we're linked to their ancestry. Ah, my knight. Pieces that carelessly jump out of their troop can only blame themselves if they're defeated. That's only natural. And perhaps you have a point, but if you're going with that philosophy, Berlone is their land. Any incidents that occur in that town are under the hands of the Falzone. Isn't that right, Joseph? He knows! I mean, obviously he knows, but like, he's like, I know what you're fucking doing. But he's just letting shit play out. I think Emilio is Jesus. He's like, I'm watching you. And I'm only going to step in when you like really cross the fucking line, but otherwise I'm just going to leave my Anyways, Amelia was smiling peacefully, but his tone suddenly became stern. I know you thought you hit it well, but I know. You were trying to cut off the fell zone behind His Holiness's back, were you not? And you lied about the disciples' role. You failed to provide accurate information to the succeeding keepers of the grave. Isn't that right? In trying my best to remain calm, I couldn't answer him. As if uninterested in my answer, Emilio continued speaking. It's gotta be weird, this guy's like a hundred, talking to a ten-year-old who's like, ha ha ha, I know everything. <laughs> I'm so glad you reconsidered. I have high expectations for you. Joseph von Rosberg may one day become a solid leader of the church. 
Checkmate! <laughs> I win! I tried my best to maintain composure, but my fists on top of my knees were shaking. I denied the invitation from the Lao Shu and decided to follow the church's rules. Oh, and that decision was the choice that kept me from falling through thin ice. That moment was the first time I realized it. Interesting. So in all the other routes, he was siding with the Lao Shu, blah, blah, blah. And in this one, he's like, oh, I shouldn't. Uh-huh. Interesting. So, like... I mean, okay, making more and more sense that they made Gilbert, like, the last route, you have to do everybody else, because his kind of... Everyone else's Rosberg is always doing the same thing. Rosberg is trying to hand over control to the Lao Shu and take away from the Falzone and blah, blah, blah. And that's happening in everybody's route, even in Orlocks, and, or and then we find out more about that. And then now it's like, and this is a totally almost different timeline. Like, Rosberg changes his fucking mind. Interesting. But then this has something to do with the counterfeit thing, which I wonder, I really do think, because now we're going counterfeit casino. It has something to do with Dire Torre, abso fucking lootly, and I wonder if then that kind of more leads to then his path. You know what I mean? So we're going to get some stuff here like, <gasps> what? And then we go into his path and then see kind of like his perspective, like what the fuck this is. I'm just, I'm getting sus now. Like, you know what I mean? Walking down the hallway, I saw an unfamiliar face leaving Gil's room. Damn it! The man slammed the door shut and let out a grunt of frustration as he stormed off. He's not from the Visconti, is he? I'd never seen him before. The air he gave off didn't seem to be like one of Gil's men, either. Did something happen? Gil, do you have a moment? Is now a good time? I noticed you had a visitor. Yeah, we're done. Anyhow, what's new? Oliver called for you. Some packages arrived from America, so he wants to inspect... <laughs> I was like, he got excited to run, and I was like, is it going to be like fake money? And then they're like, see, you have all this fucking funny money! And he's like, I didn't... What? <laughs> no, it sounds like something else. That's it! <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Whoa, so this group is wooden. Gotta test it out later. Are they guns? It's because it's America. It's probably guns if it's not money. As soon as I told Gil, he'd immediately rushed off to the lounge. Okay, if it was boxes of money that came and it was fake money to try to, like, so that then all of a sudden the cops bust in and they're like, you've got, a, you've got crates full of fake money. I was set up! He wouldn't have looked excited, but now he's opening it, and it's like, it's guns. <laughs> it's probably fucking guns. Just saying. Uh, I ran after him to see what it was, but Gil had been like this since then. He joyously looked at a new weapon, gently holding it as he examined it carefully. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah, so this is the rumored new option, huh? If you put it on, it reduces the recoil. And the Thompson. Oh, it's in this box. I gotta test this out later, too. What Gil took out of the wooden box was a gun bigger than any I had seen before. It was very long with two handles. It appeared to require two hands to use. I timidly walked in between the packages toward Gil and asked, Did you get all this from America? He's like, yeah, America's really good about guns. It's going to be weird in the future. I can't wait to see what 100 years is like. Everybody has a fucking gun. Guns everywhere. It's actually kind of funny. You got crates from America. I should have suspected, but because we were dealing with American fake money, I was like, did he get set up with fake money? But he got excited. Had to be guns. <laughs> yeah. Gil looked happy, surrounded by wooden boxes that filled up half the lounge. Also, this is very impy-like. Okay. <laughs> Can't help with the voice actor being the same, that like... He's all, he's all excited about his guns, but Impy would be all excited about Look at this! Look at all the, like, machine parts that I got! Like... <laughs> and I got this gear, and I got this wheel, and I got this thing, and I put them together, and I make something. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Oh! Good lord. Uh, anyway. Not at all like Okita at all. He would have just been threatening to kill you the whole time. <laughs> That's the difference. He would have been happy about swords. <laughs> Gil 
looked happy, surrounded by wooden boxes that filled up half the lounge. It was likely that they all contained guns wrapped in the same packing material and thin paper. People in our position need power like this every so often. This is our lifeline. Our supply must be replenished regularly. Gil spoke in a serious tone, but his eyes were sparkling like a child's. He looks like a child who just bought a new toy. <laughs> kind of is. Seeing him so excited, I couldn't help but smile. I wondered why he'd have such scary things, but to Gil, they weren't scary at all. Oliver watched Gil open one box after another inside. <laughs> our boss always insists on inspecting all our weapons personally. <laughs> Gil gazed fondly at the gun in his hands, looking as though he was about to rub his cheek against it. <laughs> I want that, CG! Gil just cuddling again. The fucking... Say, Gil, what do these things do? They look bigger than normal guns. It's a cannon! It's a fucking cannon! I'm just kidding. Uh, this is the M... This is 1921. Just by holding down the trigger, you can easily shoot multiple bullets. Or is it the M1921? Or is it the 1921? I don't know. A submachine gun developed in the United States, also known as the Thompson or the Chicago Typewriter. <laughs> you can shoot 800 bullets a minute. Isn't that something? 800? I can't even imagine it. <laughs> right? You gotta see it for yourself, huh? I wanna hurry and test it out. <laughs> oh, kill... What's inside of that box? Oh, this? When assembled, it becomes a cannon. He has a fucking cannon! <laughs> I was joking! I was fucking joking! <laughs> oh my god! Huh? You're gonna build this? Here? That's right. And this one here is used officially by the American Army. The heat dissipation jacket. Up until now, Gil was going on and on, answering my questions, but suddenly fell silent. What's the matter, Gil? No, nothing. He must not be interested in these things. Uh, sorry. That's not true. I want to hear more of your stories, Gil. She's like, no, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but your excitement over this is adorable. Gil? No, I just find it odd. Odd? I mean, your typical woman wouldn't find much use for these types of things. I... It's because you look so excited. That's really, that's the wrong answer, though. It's the, it's my first time seeing them. I really, like, I would have chosen it's because you look so excited. Like, because for me, that would be it. It'd be like, no, I don't care about guns. But you are so excited. Not even like, yeah, look at my gun. I'm trying to, I'm macho and sexy. Yeah, I'm a man. I got a gun. Like, no, I'd be like, no, you're a douche canoe. But if you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Shoots on 800 bullets. It's like so excited. Huh? I'm like, you're freaking out like I do about anime boys. Like, I'm totally like there to be like, okay, no. Because your excitement and you're just being like a hyperactive child on crap. It's amazing. I love it. I'm here for it. But that's not the right answer. So, well, I've never seen one of these up close. Oh, yeah? I guess. But I suppose it still makes me odd. No, that's not true. Is he blushing? Oh, my God. So adorable. Gilbert blushing is too cute. Like, it's just... You just don't think he's capable of it. For some reason, Gil seemed to blush, and he squinted a bit as he spoke. You're the first girl I've ever heard say that. I was a little surprised. But it's kind of nice to have a person ask a lot of questions about it. He smiled happily. Excuse me. Whoa! This is really something. Leo entered the lounge and his eyes grew wide at the sight of the weapons. Yeah, I got the good stuff, didn't I? So what is it, Leo? Need to talk to me? And today's the day I have to go see the boss. I report to him on the regular. So I wanted to ask your plans in the afternoon. I personally would feel better if I could stay in the manor like this, but... I see. I guess for now the plan is... As Gil answered Leo, he checked the time and nodded, remembering something. After I inspect these boxes, I plan on going to the church. It's Friday today. You're going too, right, Space? Is it okay? Of course. You should say hi to the sisters. Thank you, Gil. And then I'll take along. I'm sure the boss won't mind if my report's a little late. No, you go do your work. I'll be with her. Leave her to me. But 
And Gerdinger is also my job. Reporting to your boss is just as important. You've been doing your job, Gardener. On days you have to report to... Report. Dante knows you can leave her to me. And then, Senor Redford, please take care of her. Will do. And Leo? Yes? Call me Gil already. Even my youngest guys call me that. And no, it's fine. Thank you. I'm from the Fell Zone. I have to draw the line somewhere. You sure are serious. Guess you take after Dante. <laughs> oh, Leo blushed. <laughs> Just saw it in the... before he disappeared. Leo's like, <laughs> take after Dante. <laughs> it's like the best compliment you could give him. <gasps> this is so cute. Leo smiled shyly as he bowed before exiting the lounge. Gil turned to me with the usual plan. After going to the church, I was thinking of making my rounds to see if anyone's got any updates. Where do you want to go? I want to hear your opinion. Hmm. I thought about it for a little while. I know we're over time, but... <clears throat> I'm concerned about the Lao Shu. Since Leo belongs to the Fell Zone, I'm sure he's able to communicate with them. I'm concerned about the Lao Shu. Yeah, I was thinking the same. As soon as we settled our plans, Gil resumed his inspection of the weapons. I wanted to stay with him and watched him finish the whole process. Perfect time to end it. All right. I'm going to wrap this part up and we will continue in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.